Are you looking to buy a new pair of over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones? Confused by all of the options? I can help. Hello and welcome back to Marco's Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. Now I've tried most over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones that are on the market at the moment. I've also tried quite a few of the in-ear versions as well. But there are just so many options. On my desk now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs of over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones, and they're all slightly different, but they all sound kind of the same, and they all have a lot of the same features. So this is my ultimate buying guide for buying your next pair of noise-canceling headphones. Obviously, you're probably gonna be thinking about pricing to begin with, and this is where things are pretty interesting. So at the low end of the scale, we have things like the One Audio A30s. Now these are just $70, about 70 pounds on Amazon, and they are really good. Surprisingly good, actually. These were the first budget pair of noise cancelling headphones that I tried, and I couldn't get over how good they sounded. At the other end of the scale, we have Apple's AirPods Max, which are £550, about $550. These definitely sit at the top end of the scale in terms of consumer over-the-ear noise cancelling headphones. You can get them a bit cheaper if you shop around. Prices are starting to drop, but they're still pretty expensive. And then in the middle, we have things like the Sony XM4s, the Bose 700s, and a whole raft of other headphones, which sit between 250 to 350 pounds, about the same in dollars. That's about the sweet spot for over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones. And as I'll get onto in a moment, what is quite nice these days is that you don't have to compromise too much with sound quality, even if you go down to the £70, $70 range with the A30s. They still sound really good. The one thing you do compromise a little bit on the cheaper you go is the build quality. So the build quality of the AirPods Max, I think, is top-notch. It's the best feeling pair of headphones I have on this table. Whereas the A30s, those One Audios, they're a bit plasticky, to be honest. And even some Sonys, these are the Sony, they've got a really stupid name, uh, the W, no, sorry, the H910s. Get your app together, Sony, with your headphone names, please. But these are a bit cheaper than the Sony XM4s, and they do feel a bit cheaper. They sound great, again, but they do feel a bit less premium. So the great thing is these days is that if you spend less on headphones, you don't always get a worse sound. You just tend to give up things like the build quality and certain features, which we'll get onto later. But please do shop around. For instance, I managed to pick up the Bose 700s, which were a really desirable pair of headphones. I think they were about 350 pounds or so when they were first launched. I got these for 170 pounds on Amazon a couple of weeks ago. Now, when it comes to design, that's very much a personal choice with anything, but particularly with headphones, and it's difficult for me to give you buying guidance on that. Most of the headphones that I have in front of me aren't particularly garish or Beats-like. Now, for instance, if you want a really colourful, very branded pair of headphones, then I would go down the Beats route. In fact, they're the only headphones I don't have on this table. But they all look slightly different. For instance, these Jabras, they have a very kind of wide profile on your head. They stick out quite a lot, which for me is a bit too much. Then you have the Bang & Olufsen's, which are very stylish and not to everyone's taste, but I particularly like these. And then you have the more kind of utilitarian, slightly boring looking headphones like the Sony XM4s. And I do quite like the retro chic type look we have with things like the Momentums from Sennheiser. Because it, a lot of these headphones talk to you when you turn them on, you might have to ignore that during this video. The AirPods Max are my personal favourite simply because they have quite a thin profile on the ear cups, so they don't stick out too much. But again, it's very much a personal choice when it comes to design. When it comes to comfort, there's three things that you need to think about. The first thing is clamping force. So if you wear glasses, for instance, like I do quite regularly, then certain headphones clamp a little bit too much on the sides of your head and they can push your glasses into your skull. Not very nice. Now, most headphones get it right, I think, with clamping force. They're all fairly easy on the head, and if you wear glasses, they're not too much trouble. But if you can get a pair and try them on first, if you wear glasses, I'd recommend doing so. The second thing is headband cushioning. So for instance, on the Sony XM4s, they have a lovely cushion at the top of the headphone here. And it just means that you can wear these for a very long period of time without it hurting your head too much after a while. The cheaper Sonys, these WH-H910s, whatever they're called, they don't have quite as much cushioning up here. And that, after a while, starts to hurt your head a little bit, which isn't much fun. The third thing to think about when it comes to comfort is driver protrusion. I've made that term up, I think, but what it means, basically, and I'm gonna use the Sony H910s as an example again. Inside each of these ear cups is obviously the driver, it's where the speaker is. And 
around the driver, there's normally some plastic or some kind of casing to protect it. Now, on certain headphones, including these, that thing sticks out a little bit. Now, depending on the size of your ears and how much these clamp against your ears, that might dig into your ear a little bit. And it might not happen immediately, but after a amount of time that you're wearing them, a bit like the headband, it may start to, to irritate you a little bit. Now, these are by far the worst for that, which I've discovered over time. Whereas most other headphones on this table don't have that kind of protrusion. So just bear that in mind. Again, if you can get a pair of these and try them on, it will help you try and work out if that's gonna be a problem. But with comfort, I have three favorites. The first is the AirPods Max. These are the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn. In second place is the Sony XM4s. Again, very, very comfortable for long periods of time. And third, a recent entrant for me is the Bose 700s. Again, an incredibly comfortable pair of headphones. When it comes to connecting these headphones to your various devices, be it your phone, your laptop, or your tablet, whatever it might be, this is fairly straightforward. All of these headphones use Bluetooth. And Bluetooth is by no means perfect, but most modern headphones are pretty good at in terms of firstly connecting to your device in the first place, but also maintaining that connection. I think gone are the days of headphones randomly dropping the connection or just disappearing from your device. I don't tend to experience that at all. The only outlier here actually is the AirPods Max because these have a special chip in them, which is developed by Apple. It's the H1 chip and it still uses Bluetooth but it adds some special source, which means it connects very quickly to each of your Apple devices. And in fact, you only have to connect it to one Apple device, and then your iCloud account syncs that connection between all of your devices. And it also does things like automatic switching between your Apple devices. Very smart, it's the best version of that. Some of these headphones do a similar thing. So the Sony XM4s, for instance, can, can connect to two different Bluetooth devices. In my experience, it's, it's okay. It's just not as convenient or automatic as what you get with the AirPods Max. Now, some of these headphones can run passively, which is worth bearing in mind. And what that basically means is, for instance, you can take the B&O H9s, connect the cable into whatever device you're using, and you don't have to turn them on to use them. They don't need any power, you just plug them in with the cable and they operate as normal headphones. Now you can't do that with certain headphones on here, AirPods Max, even though you can connect them via a terrible cable that Apple gives you, they don't work passively. For most people that may not be a big deal, but if you tend to use your headphones plugged in occasionally, it might be quite useful. I think one of the most underrated things about any pair of headphones is the case. Now I'm going to give you two examples. This is a brilliant headphone case. This comes with the Sony XM4s. It's really hard. It's got a lovely zip on it. <laughs> Plenty of compartments inside to put all your cables and stuff. It keeps your headphones very safe and it's nice and compact. You know, you can lob that in your bag. You don't really know it's there. My second example is this. I've talked a lot about this. I've thrown it around a lot because it's terrible. This is the case that comes with the AirPods Max. It isn't a case. It's this weird kind of horrible material rubbery type thing which doesn't protect the headphones at all and looks ridiculous. Now thankfully, most headphones don't come with things like that. Most of them have hard cases like the Sony XM4s. Some of them have bags. For instance, the Sony H910s come with a bag. That's not great. But if you intend on taking your headphones out with you, then hard cases really are the way to go. When it comes to sound, this is where things get really interesting, in my opinion, because most of these headphones, in fact, all of them, sound really good. And it's where there's a huge dose of common sense needed. Now, audiophiles will scoff at that advice, but these headphones aren't for audiophiles. Audiophiles invest money in lots of expensive equipment and really take pride in the stuff they're listening to. Most people who buy, for, for instance, the both 700s like nice headphones, obviously, but they just want a pair of headphones that sound good, have decent noise cancelling, and have great battery life. They all vary slightly if you really listen out for things. Certain headphones here have a bit more bass. Certain headphones have slightly more highs and trebles and things like that. Some of these headphones have more presence, you know, that kind of mid-range stuff, but they're all pretty good sounding. And you're only ever gonna notice those differences if you sit down and A-B test them like I do. But no one does that unless you're reviewing headphones. Now, if you like a certain sound profile, so if you're very keen on lots of bass, then things like Beats, although Beats have changed over the years, they're not quite as bass heavy as they used to be, but they might be a bit more suitable for you. If you like a bit more refined, grown up sound, then a pair of Bose 700s or QC45s will probably be better. But I'd just do a bit of research. I'd look at individual reviews of each of the headphones that you're considering and get an idea from the reviewer in terms of what the sound's like. So sound-wise, you're not gonna have much buyer's remorse. I'd personally concentrate on the other things in this buying guide.
Now, just as sound quality is pretty comparable amongst all of these headphones, so is noise cancelling. I think we're at a stage now with this technology where it's pretty pretty good all round, really. Now, if you spend a bit less, so for instance, if you do spend $70 on a pair of A30s, the noise cancelling on these versus the B&O H9s, there's a difference. These don't have quite as much noise cancelling. You can still, you can hear a bit more around you compared to these, but that's understandable. These are much cheaper than these. But generally speaking, noise cancelling is pretty good across the range. If you're after the absolute best noise cancelling, then it's probably a toss up between the Sony XM4s, the Bose 700s or the Bose QC45s and the AirPods Max. They kind of win the battle here, but it's quite close for. One thing that you might want to pay attention to is transparency mode. Uh, that's what Apple calls it. They all have different terms for it. But that is basically when you can momentarily turn off noise cancelling and filter in the outside world. It's also incredibly useful when you want to use these headphones for calls because you can hear yourself. Now the absolute gold standard when it comes to transparency mode is transparency mode that you get with the AirPods Max. It is just superb. It's a kind of synthesized version of the world around you, but it kind of amplifies it. And it's almost like hearing everything through a mic, which I suppose you are actually, but it's just, it's a very satisfying way of listening to everything around you while keeping the headphones on. The rest of them, they're not bad, it's just not anywhere near as good as the transparency mode that you get in AirPods Max. So if that's a big consideration for you, even though they're considerably more expensive, they might be worth considering. Call quality. Now, hands up, I don't use any of these headphones for calls. I occasionally use the AirPods Max, but it's very rare. I tend to use my AirPods Pro for that. So I can't give you any meaningful buying advice when it comes to call quality. Now, hands up, I'm sorry about that, but I don't have the time to sit down and test all of these for that. The good news is YouTube is a massive place and there's some very smart, more patient people out there who have already done that. So if you intend on using headphones for calls, go and do some research, go and watch some other videos and see what other people think about it. Just as a bit of advice, I do know that the Sony XM4s get an awful lot of stick for their call quality. It's apparently not very good at all. But the AirPods Max, like I say, they work very well for calls because of that transparency mode. And there will be other headphones out there that work very well. Just go and do a bit of research. When it comes to battery, I've got some good news. Most of these headphones will go well beyond 20 hours of use. That's about the standard operating time for over-the-ear noise cancelling headphones. So you don't need to worry too much about that. They last a very long time. But there are two things to bear in mind. The first thing is the charging method. Now, all of these headphones on this desk, bar one, will charge via USB-C, which is this little port here, and it's what pretty much anything battery powered these days charges by. One thing that doesn't is AirPods Max. And I've moaned about this about as much as I've moaned about the case. These still use lightning, and that's Apple's proprietary charging mechanism. And it's just horrid, old fashioned, annoying, and just means that these run out of charge more than any other pair of headphones that I have. But the good news is, unless you're buying a pair of AirPods Max, you're gonna end up with a pair of headphones that charge via USB-C, and that's a good thing. The other thing to bear in mind is standby time, which is really important because your headphones will spend most of their time not in use. And you don't want to have to charge them all the time, no matter how convenient USB-C is. So you want to know that when you pick those headphones up, they're going to have some decent charge in them. And again, most of the headphones on this table are just stellar performers when it comes to standby time. The Sony XM4s, for instance, I barely ever charge these and they've always got charge in them. These Sennheiser Momentum 3s, I've not used these for months. I got them out for this buying guide and they still had 80% charge in them or something. It's just... Crazy, that is what you want from a pair of headphones. What you don't want, I'm gonna have to pick them up again, is what the AirPods Max give you, which is fairly good standby time if you put them in that stupid case because it puts them into a low power mode, but you can't turn them off. There's no power button on these. You cannot turn these off for love nor money, which means they run down much quicker than the rest of these headphones. And that's really annoying. So again, the AirPods Max are a bit of an outlier here, thanks Apple, but the rest of these headphones, standby time, Fantastic, in use time, standard, 20 hours plus, no problem. And finally, the charging method, USB-C, nice. 
There are some miscellaneous features to think about with these headphones, although I think most of them are a little bit gimmicky. I don't tend to use these types of features, but it's worth mentioning them. Some of these headphones, for instance, the Bose 700s come with Alexa built into them. Obviously the AirPods Max have a really good integration with Siri. There's also a multi-device connection on Bluetooth, which I talked about earlier, which we get with things like the Sony XM4s. So that's quite useful. But again, all that stuff is a little bit gimmicky and probably shouldn't sway your purchasing decision. The only thing that stands out here, again, it's always the AirPods Max, isn't it? But it's for a good reason this time. And that is that these offer something called spatial audio and Dolby Atmos support, which enables you to watch things like movies and TV shows and even listen to music in glorious surround sound and even Dolby Atmos where it feels like or sounds like things are coming from above your head. And spatial audio also does this very, very clever thing where if you're watching your Apple TV and you turn your head left or right, it still sounds like the sound is coming from the TV. It's really clever, some very clever computational stuff going on. And it isn't that gimmicky actually. The more you use it, the more you realize that it's very, very clever. Now I've been talking primarily about over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones today, but there are an increasing number of in-ear versions on the market. Now the most obvious are AirPods Pro. I've got mine in a stupid case, ignore that. These are the gold standard when it comes to in-ear noise-canceling headphones. And they don't just work on Apple devices. You can use them as normal Bluetooth headphones if you wish, but these are just fantastic. Great noise-canceling, great battery life, great sound. They work very well for calls. These are my main calling headphones, actually. Another pair of headphones which I've been very impressed by recently are are the Beats Studio Buds. These are a bit cheaper than the AirPods Pro and have a slightly different way of fitting into your ears, but very, very good. The Sennheiser Momentum TW2s are also worth a mention, they're very good. And at the budget end of the scale, I'd recommend checking out something like the Creative Outlier Air V2s, which for the price are actually pretty good. I'll put links in the description to the headphones that I've talked about and shown you today, and I hope this has helped you pick the pair that's right for you. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments section and I'll help out and other people will as well, I'm sure. But if you wanna see me battle out the AirPods Max versus the Sony XM4s, keep watching for a link to that video because that kind of reveals the difference between a really expensive pair of headphones and a reasonably priced pair of headphones. Keep watching for that link. But until next time, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.